All right, so where are we? Maybe share your screens, uh, all of us, and just go through the screens of people who are still working on this at this hour. Um, can you do that? I've got some product. I've got a little CAD file. Yeah, I saw you were, I saw you were working through it. So basically, I, I went through and watched the uh, the first half. Felt about like an hour and a half. I think I was still outside. Mm -hmm. um, just listening and going through and kind of itemizing things and trying to get the total dollar amount and looking at comparable printers. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, looking at the numbers that are the standards for what materials we can use and noting those as well. So all of that's in here. Um, what's like the main conclusion? Like what's the price points you found? So build, build chamber you estimated at 5K uh, earlier. Mm -hmm, yep. Treadmill motor for fifty dollars. We need uh, seven-ish stepper motors. Yeah. For fifty dollars a motor, uh, the frame with rebar truss for two forty for a ten-foot frame. The build plate is going to need to be, or not the build plate. The um, heat shield is going to need to be twice as large for that. That's just one thing to note. Um, so that price point puts us, I would say, it's, I would say, less than ten k. Like you still need the controller and the metal hot end and. Um, you know, maybe a few other things, but that cost is probably negligible compared to the rest. Under 10K, probably around six or seven. The Mini Factory Ultra, which is linked in here, is 54K. Where do we find this file? Paste it, because it's not on your it's, log. It's not. I haven't seen it, is it? It should be, uh, let me see if it's, yeah, it's, it should be at the top of. Initial assessment? No, um, if you have... Your X challenge the research, okay. Yeah, in the... Okay. And that should link directly to it. Yep. So the problem to find is pretty small. Mm-hmm, yeah, so background research. Um, the question is, what's the... What kind of price are we finding for the competition? Like, anything so small size or large size? So that was the thing. The Mini Factory Ultra is 54K. Um, I put the, the, the specs of it, 450, 480C for the extruder temperature, 250C for the build plate, and 250 for the, oh, okay. the heated build chamber. And the you know, bed. 250, plate okay. So you figure we may be able to get down, you may actually be able to get 10X if we were able to optimize some of it. That's, that was one of the main conclusions. Um, the mini but factory, what's, the, what's the size? Except you know, it's the, the mini factory ultra is small. It's not. It's you know, it's not going to be the eight foot, <laughs> four foot by four foot. Yeah, we have to do. We do have to consider. And if it's three hundred millimeters, that's about what is that? Twelve inches by seven or so. So if they've got twelve by seven inches or so. We're about eight times. Let's see, what is what is their size there? Uh, oh, you're just talking about the effective size yeah. uh, difference. Um, yeah. Um. Okay, so they've got like three hundred thirty by one eighty by one eighty. Seven eight millimeters. Yeah. So that's tiny. So for us, our volume, I mean, that's about half a foot by a foot, you know, like a little bit of volume. We factor that in on the performance benefit side, rather than, um, so that would increase the cost, that would, or yeah. that would lower the ratio. You're pretty much paying for the volume, like li literally it is. So if we've got four by four feet by eight feet, eight feet, you're talking a factor of eight vertical, you're talking about a factor of about 10 by um, maybe four, six, six times eight. It's about fifty. Fifty times smaller. So you have to multiply the fifty by fifty to get two point five million. <laughs> yeah, and then not counting the actual cost difference, which you could have. Like if you're just looking at strictly cost, it, yeah. it is almost ten x anyway. Yeah. But the performance of it and the the feature. Yeah. 
times fifty. <laughs> yeah, but that's a good price point. That man, that's pretty pretty expensive for as tiny. That was the cheap, tiny build chamber. That was one of the cheaper ones. Fifty k. I had another one on there that was one hundred and ten k, but that was the higher end specs, so like five hundred Celsius for uh, extruder nozzle temperature and four hundred for build. Like it, it was the highest at one hundred and ten k, but still smaller. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, that gets you the idea. I mean, these things are rather expensive, uh, and which means that no way for any human having access to this <laughs> besides people who can really afford it <laughs> so um, and that's and that kind of proves our point that these things are very expensive and we do have a significant value proposition we can probably search around we could prob possibly find something else but yeah keep going keep going and find find more because we want to basically say a def definitive case the lowest price point comparison is such and such and that in itself is going to be a lot of compelling arguments for we're not just saying oh you know we've got this awesome chamber that have numbers it's like x times and so forth yeah when you so say the good. number then people are just going to be like like wait a minute how and then you go and explain yeah <laughs> and yeah then you, then you it want to show us for itself yeah we you know we can say we are we have a significantly larger build volume and our price point is still lower and then they ask us really like, yes, in yeah. fact, <laughs> if they had what we had in terms of size, they would cost $2.5 million. <laughs> so, yeah, um, That's pretty good. Other that, that should kind of scare us. It's like that, that might mean that, hmm, why is this so hard? Well, we're going to find out. And I, uh, I will say... We have to address each issue by each issue. I don't think it's going to be that hard, like like it might seem. The the huge numbers, like if it's that that high, you might start assuming, wow, I could, that must be really hard. And I'll tell you, we'll find otherwise. We will. It's not going to be that hard. So, so. It's pretty crazy that the whole incentive reward is can be less than the cost. Of oh yeah, things. that's that's a huge value proposition. Like we're saying. The value proposition invest your time into this yeah we have to speak like that invest your time in it because we're literally open sourcing like a trillion dollars worth of value uh, it's insane so the um yeah cheapest one on here that i'm looking at there's there was a list mm. it's it's the smallest um by quite a bit and it, the extruder temperature is high 540 c but the bed and chamber temperatures are like Around the minimum for printing high-end uh, mm -hmm. thermal plastics, so that's twenty-nine thousand. Mm -hmm. So, but then you have even more of a performance. Yeah, still small. Multiplier, very small. Even small. Yeah, have more of a performance. Yeah. So sort of cost ratio. For <laughs> that thing is like eight by six inches or so, something like that. Yeah. So tiny, tiny things. Mm -hmm. Wow, but look at those price points. It's insane. Okay. And the Stratasys is, looks like the Fortis. Okay, so that's like the big one. Oh my goodness. This re um, it almost scares me because they're, they're saying 140,000 and they're only <laughs> half a meter. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah. We're going to change the world. Holy cow. Oh, yeah. Oh. Wow. Man. Okay, so that's like, holy cow, these things are expensive, and those things are tiny. So, okay. Um, yeah, so, so anything else? Um, I'll just keep looking at it. Uh, so basically business case study on these on these printers trying to see where we can optimize that seeing what the competitor is mm -hmm. and then um, I, I made notes about the plastic in general like which you know doing a little bit of reading analysis into the materials part of it so mm -hmm. certain plastics can't go in with other plastics and mm -hmm. maybe there would be a way to engineer the plastic beforehand uh, or after maybe it's it's melted I'm not sure yeah, know. it's blends. You can blend certain things together and to change some of their properties. There's additives. 
Right. But, you know, we don't want to mess too much with that. If we've got what we've got off the street, I mean, we'll take it. Okay. That's really that note. And I'll just yeah. focus on the business. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, once we get to the, the performance, just the physical performance characteristics, and yeah, we'll be able to do pretty much anything. So I, I think the main challenge is absolutely getting to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so who wants to go next? Uh, Did anyone? I, I was actually doing something similar. Yeah? I, found, uh, I was doing a spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah, share your screen. And I'm pressing then. share your screen, but nothing is happening. Really? You have to select the screen, click on the screen that you want to share, and then click share. Choked up from a long day. Well, tell us about it. What do you got? Uh, uh, your links should get us to there. So, do you have the links? Ken, where is your slide? Do you have a slide here? Yeah, maybe, maybe it's because you joined twice. You should probably uh, exit one of them. Because maybe you, you can only share on one. Um, do you want me to go right now? Yeah. Should I unmute myself? Yeah. Okay, my mic's not working, but okay. Um, basically, uh, I was doing research on what tools we could use for collaboration, and came came to the conclusion that like the NAV framework is a really good way to approach building uh, collaboration tools for open source hardware. What's the framework? It's called NAP. And it's basically built by these guys in Europe who use it for uh, creative coding in like multi-screen or like embedded devices. Um, so it has a pretty good like, I was, I was uh, working on uh, going through the, the documentation and learning how to use it. Um, the like the main thing it could probably do is um, be able to um, integrate uh, like a lot of these different processes like slides and video and images and audio and 3D models into a single application. Um, just so you can find everything faster and uh, interact with it collaboratively. Uh, 
Um, besides that, I was exploring like Blender and uh, using uh, a plugin to import the CAD models. And uh, is this under effective collaboration? Uh, or is yeah. That yeah. Uh, I didn't take any notes about uh, about the NAP framework yet, but I'll I'll code a little. I'll code up a little demo app for next week or something. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I mean, let's see how we can integrate that. If it's easy to integrate, and all of that. Um, thought about wiki. Um, we also want to make make ways where when people are contributing, we can track obviously track those contributions. There's ways to track it if people are tracking on the wiki, because because you can look at commits, just basically user contributions. You can look at time logs. You can use uh, just work logs. I think work log is probably a good way to organize when. Well, that's that's an easy way with the, within the wiki. There may be other ways to do it. Uh, but yeah, thinking about how do we track everybody and, and make that more or less automated because if there's a large number of people participating, you're going to need to track that. You can't track you that can manually. Run, you could run code through uh, uh, meet the media wiki. It has something called hooks. Mm. So you can run code when like a user joins to create like a work log automatically mm. or something like that. Uh, what's, what's it called within the wiki? Well, it's, just the, it's just like the media wiki, which is what uh, oh, the OSC wiki yeah. is used, like. They have, they Cooks? have uh, to run code and, and do all sorts of smart things. Huh. It's okay, just cool. on the, the menu wiki site. Okay. And then go to like extensions. Uh huh. Oh, so that's basically extensions, adding extensions into the wiki? Okay. That would be a, a boon. Yeah. Like if you could make yeah. it a, just make it out of like a project, like a small module project management where you can see different things. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. There's a lot of potential. It's, yeah. It, it's manageable now, but when if there's a lot of people, then it's like, oh, I gotta go check this log and this log. And, uh, right. And so, all those other is the only issue that's in PHP or what? What's the language? Um, I don't know. Because see, the wiki is in PHP, I so that's PHP. that's kind of a. Yeah, PHP is a little quirky, but okay. It's not that. It's not that bad. Yeah. Okay. Well, that sounds good. That would be that would be interesting. We've never never touched that yet. So maybe maybe you're the guy that show us how to touch it. Um, okay. Ken, you wanna just go ahead. Just just let us know where you're at. Because we de we do have at least the uh, the document. So go ahead. Mm -hmm. They are low, low price uh, item, which uh, is low. So what's the lowest you found? Um, well, basically it's the, it's, it's the um, one from Michigan, uh, just short pierce. Be good if it worked. Yeah, okay, that's tough. Well, next one is the one from Turkey. Yeah, commercial products versus that the Joshua. That's it's experimental, so mm -hmm. you can't can't necessarily say that as a price point comparison. Um, and what's it do? What's the specs on that? Um, the chamber is not heated as such. It's just insulated. Just, uh, okay, insulated. just insulated. Um, yeah, the, you can't for it. Won't, nah, it won't work. No, the, that's the, not. The, uh, and thermal plus won't do what we need. We gotta really look at like 120 plus. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you have as low as 90 heated chambers, then you can do ABS, I believe, very reliably, like tall things and thin things. Um, but we have to find it out. Like, let's let's find out what exactly those temperature marks can't just be a heated chamber, like an unheated chamber, it must have some auxiliary heat that it makes it uh, pretty high. Higher than 60. It has to be higher than 60, definitely. Uh, and the in, in Tamsis Hanma, that's for the uh, 90 degree heated chamber. Okay. 450 degree extruder, and the build plate's about 10 by 10. Okay. 
Yeah. And what's the heat temp heat chamber? You said ninety. Ninety. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I clicked on your doc. I I clicked uh, access. We need to. Those documents aren't open yet. Um, right. Okay. Uh, so looking at some price points. So we should organize that. Like if if Joshua was doing that and you are, so maybe co collate that, co collect that into one. What I would suggest there is start a wiki page that says. That would go under analysis of industry standards, high temperature printer analysis of industry standards. What what's out there within the development sp spreadsheet? That's the line item number. So we should actually see the development spreadsheet for the high temperature printer. Um, the industry standards are item number two. It's right after requirements. So we should definitely because uh, a lot of the things that we're going to develop are going to be with respect to, of course, the development template. Yes. Okay. Um, sorry, what, sorry. What was the price point on that one with the ninety C? Uh, five thousand eight hundred. Okay, yeah. five thousand eight hundred ninety nine for. It. Yeah, that's that's kind of more reasonable. It's still a lot of money uh, yeah. for a small 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 thing. Yeah. Mhm. Mm You wanted to show something, so you should take a picture of that. Take take a picture. Okay, take a, this is this is back of the envelope drawings. Take a picture of it and share it with everybody. So and then put maybe some arrows to it. So picture, and you can simply go. Once you have the picture on your phone, what do you do from there? You can share it. You can just download it, whatever. Uh, but in terms of actually. Um, as far as a shared picture folder for everybody, uh, the best thing to do is just upload it to your own Google Drive and just put links to it, and then maybe set up a folder for yourself. Because otherwise, um, yeah, there's a lot of people. It's kind of getting individual people's shared folders is a good idea, and then we can, if we really find it valuable, we can just download it too. Otherwise, it's there, and we still have it. You know. Okay. Thank you. It's pretty good. list of some mm -hmm. uh, places that I thought would be good. Um, I don't I don't know if you've ever had any correspondence with PBS or NPR. But NPR, yes. There was a, we were on NPR once. Okay. Google like NPR, OSE stuff. Okay. Yeah, probably. Oh, there's actually a page on a, on a wiki called In the News. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. So you'll find it. Uh, you can find it there. I'll paste it in, in your... Doc. Yeah. Nice. Or press. It's called press. Nice. We have a, a few YouTube channels that um, I thought would be interested in it. Um, just some individuals also. Um, that one's actually that one's good. Oh. I got uh, one guy, there's one guy who, I don't know if he would be, be so interested in, like, 
being a part of it or uh, doing an interview or anything, but uh, yeah, sure. is a really good source of information um, when it comes to lumber. This I posted his Twitter handle down here, um, and that was pretty much all for the media. Um, let's see. So then, with the two-minute script, this is what I had so far. Um, and then I wanted to get started on a, the longer video script. So, um, so far I was thinking, mm. explain a little bit about OSC. Um, I think the big thing that we need is this, uh, um, some more footage. I, I do feel like it's more engaging to have just people speaking extemporaneously, just talking to each other. Um, that's much more engaging than just reading from a script. Um, and so I wanted to, while I'm here, capture some footage of our discussions and put that in part of a larger video. Mm -hmm. I think that would be okay. great for the long video. Um, and yeah, so got into a little bit of the explaining of the project, but not a whole lot. Um, the other thing I was doing was uploading the video that I had. So here's the videos that I've uploaded to YouTube so far. Oh, where is that? Um, well, it's on my YouTube channel right now. Uh, link it? Oh, yeah. I should link it. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I got... Let's see. How do I do that? Well, copy and paste the link into the chat box. That's all. Okay. And then we find your latest videos on your channel when we go to your videos. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So I just take that. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, like all the videos, that should go up on the front, like on the actual Day 3 120 Design Lessons Day 3 page, so we have links to everybody's media, because I think there's going to be a lot of media floating around. and. Um, should have a dedicated place. You know you can find it like right on the yeah. our page for day three. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I like it. Okay. Cool. All right. Excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's what I was doing. Oh, yeah, by the way, blast these all over the OSC Workshop's Facebook page. Are you on Facebook? No. I no? I no Facebook? Yeah, if anybody's taking stuff, yeah, put it on a, on Facebook and share it, or put it on the OSC Workshop's Facebook page. Uh, who's who? Who does have uh, Facebook? I shared. Uh, yeah, the, I got it. Just the for workshop. It. Uh, okay. The group. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I shared the workshop yeah. video on my personal. So. Uh, um, yeah, link it. Try to link it. Put it on OSC Workshops too. Oh. Yeah, because there's like a thousand more people there. All right. Yeah. I just did a uh, this little challenge design toolkit and like marketing guide thing. Um, HeroX has like a bunch of guides and every like formatted guides on the website so I just kind of went and grabbed those and filled out kind of just basic information on what I thought about it so far but um, I think it can get into like a big bigger discussion with everyone's input on you know what these questions are like yeah, basically just questions or pinpoints that they're asking us to like really define what we're looking for. So it's just, um, you know, it's a couple pages on what are we expecting, what are we looking for, what qualifies, um, just basically spanning the entire challenge from, it's, it, it went really in depth, they have guides for just about everything. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of filled that out with um, just basic information from what I was hearing today, what we were talking about, and then it's a little marking guide for um, the challenge page on Hero X social media the accounts Twitter YouTube Facebook um, Instagram SEO maybe and um, heavy things that can fall on you and kill you 
What do we so with this so design toolkit? Are these just design, assets that we write right within the the offering? So this is the safety aspect. What you wrote down there is typically. Yeah, that's how they had it laid out. I wanted to like create a kind of see how to set up, like how the pages are set up, and I went through a couple, and it looks like you can set it up however you want. And this is just one of the so I talked about the guidelines, and you can go in there and just basic critical tools and practices now. So I'm going to focus on one aspect. Okay, I just grabbed all this information to see what we want. Tools. Um, free and accessible, so free CAD. So do you need help on getting more information there? You want to continue it's working on it? Maybe the thing to do would be make make believe you're posting a live challenge. Just start a doc that well, this uh, a doc Credit. after this. That's Credit. okay. Now we've got. Uh, to do it at low cost. So let me We've got some more ideas. Here's what the text would actually look like on the challenge itself. <coughs> to get focused like on example, in, in working HR, back from the product, right now, which is right now that product is what are we like going to say on that offering, which is on the HeroX website. Here's our challenge. What does it example, say? The Colby Index. K O L B. So be pretty focused. That's like on, a really advanced index for, for um, determining how people work. Like we're saying, and all this due diligence we're doing, like in the background on technology and things like that, that supports it and. But anyway, it's um, like the, the cost, the cost thirty bucks for us to do that. What we're saying well, to the public. We're recruiting yeah. large number, going right. through large numbers so, of volunteers that may, yeah. may be yeah. recruited for That's even good. small tasks. Um, I'll go it's myself just, now. It kind of breaks the budget. So. You know? um, Printer. So I'm so looking at the technology it's and its actual cost, just trying to detail that as much as we can. We use so I that will just did uh, uh, on the printer frame, I think we should like use it's our, piece of intellectual property, our rebar truss uh, like structure like because tool, the price point on that is pretty amazing. Knowledge wants uh, to be free so that we can benefit more can. people. Uh, that's just how we roll here. And then of course this controversy, well how do you make money? Well there's many different ways to make money, but the business model has to reflect the open source nature of the product. So, uh, example three of um, low cost, low cost tools. Like for example, a three D printer, you can build yourself for three hundred dollars in parts, okay. and then you can prototype so complex objects. Uh, so uh, that technology used to be ten thousand. Now it's three hundred. So actually, a lot of people can, even if they're on our, on our team, they don't have too much money. Well, maybe they can save up three hundred bucks to get. A it's getting all locked up. Uh, I'm, I'm freezing here. So go to my page on a working doc. Uh, I'm, I'm crashing or something. And so yeah, good news. Like for a big frame, we're talking big because the, the frame actually for the kind of design we want to do would be quite large. It would be on the order of 8 feet or 10 feet or 12 feet actually. So, so room size, we're talking now room size like 8 by 8 by 8 feet around. We could do for a 4x surface, your frame would actually be 12. So um, that is huge. But the good news is for even at that size, you're talking about uh, still about $40 per frame section. Like we're talking about making frames. If you look at my dock, the way we've done some frames before, let's see, am I, does my share work now? Not really. Okay, if, so if you look at my slide, the way we've done a lot of frames would be like in this picture down here, I just expanded, we cut those frames out of flats and we weld them together as six sides. We can do the rebar trusses that way, uh, where the rebar truss is like a, the square thing, and we put six of them together, so four sides, top and bottom, and that ends up costing like $240, which is so amazing because a steel structure like that would be thousands of dollars. Uh, on the order of thousand, multiple thousands, depending on how we do it. So that's, uh, I still think that could be the, the cheapest, low, I mean lowest cost, good deal. It would hold at least 320 pounds on top. All you need to hold on top is the extruder, you know, and maybe some rolls of filament or something. No, the rolls would probably be on the on the ground, kind of getting spooled up. Uh, so yeah, it definitely has the strength and has good cost. So I started looking now, okay, let's look at the chamber itself. Now the chamber itself would look like the picture on the next page. So I actually started that in FreeCAD and you can click on a CAD link up there. Uh, and then I put like an axis down the middle and a slits down the front and back where the Z axis goes up and down. So this is 
This is your double shell of steel with quarter inch by two inch angle corners. And the steel itself is one, one eighth inch plate and you stick insulation down the middle of it. And I looked up our value on Wikipedia, got a formula for heat loss and calculated that the heat loss for six inches would be about 150 watts over the entire machine on the sides. So I said, wow, that's pretty good. 150 watts, that's not a lot for this huge volume. Uh, so I said, okay, let's go down to four inches. That would get you 210 watts of loss, but still rather low and much thinner, like four inches compared to six inches. I'm just thinking about the build, like four inches is much easier. You can take two angles of two by two angles and you put them like that and that makes a four inch cavity in there. So you can do that. Uh, you can look at the CAD file if you want to see some detail. But that's initial, initial uh, work. And how much does this cost? Well, steel is a dollar a pound, and those plates weigh about five, five pounds per square foot. So if you're talking about approximately four by eight uh, sheets, so like this is cost. This is like as expensive as this heat chamber is going to be, minus some seals. Like we're going to have seals going up the slits. I mentioned putting something like carbon fiber blankets so that the rods go up smoothly against it, and there's a there's an airtight seal around the rods, so the rods go through that, kind of like a wiper, um, made of soft material that's high temperature material. Well, each side of this big chamber is about four by eight feet, 32 square feet. So that's about, it's got four sides, and then top and bottom, um, top and bottom are smaller, the bulk is the sides, but you got eight sheets like that, about two, four, six, eight, right? Each one of them is about 160 pounds times eight. That gets over a thousand pounds. Uh, what's 160 times uh, 160 times eight? Eight. So that's like 1480. It's about 1500 bucks for that chamber, for a huge chamber like that. Plus insulation, which is house insulation or rock wool insulation, like in a house, because this is only 200 C about. So there we go. Uh, I can claim that the, ch the chamber price is going to be 1500 for the steel plus whatever seals we need and stuff like that. Awesome. So we're so we're in. Except yeah, uh, yeah, it's kind of adding up to that that number, but that's going to be like the most expensive part, this heat chamber, because that's a solid enclosed structure. It's got a lot of a lot of surface area. Uh, the axes are. If you talk about the one-inch shaft not too expensive it's like these days it's like four dollars a foot so that adds up but you can also do they have mechanical tubing that's actually much cheaper than that and because we're not carrying a lot of weight on these on these axes you can probably span the upper axes with hollow tubing which is going to be like a dollar a foot so <laughs> it's going to be like 10 bucks for the axis steel plus 3d printed parts plus motors that are about 30 I mean this doesn't add up to much like uh, 50 to 100 bucks per axis uh, so and you got two four five I'm counting six if you count the bed axis kind of the, the support there so six times you know, 50 or 100 about 600 for the axes or so yeah we're gonna do it then you need the, the, the extruder structure and the, the the PEI that rides on top. PEI is, uh, what is it like, uh, I don't know, like 20 bucks. Is PEI we get from McMaster Car right now. And uh, PEI, McMaster, um, PEI sheets. And those cost. Let's go to the D3D because we use those, so we have that record under say D3D BOM. Um, so uh, I'm looking at PI surface, eight by eight inch. Okay, twelve by twenty-four inches or two square feet of it are how much are they? Oh, forty bucks. That's not cheap. That that stuff is high performance, pretty expensive. Uh, so about 40 bucks for two square feet on top there that's gonna add up uh, 40 times much more than that 
but if that's the case if we find that's that's too much we can use just like aluminum um, aluminum is going to be way cheaper this at at 20 bucks a square foot you've got four four by four on top except you have twice that you have eight by eight so 64 square feet times 20 if you made that out of PEI yeah it would be like 1200 bucks for that surface that's way too much let's what I would do then is do like a PEI sheet attached around the extruder there and then just so you can see what's inside it's like a visor window because it's transparent and the rest just put like aluminum and save a lot of money it's not gonna be 1200 yeah 1200 that's that's a lot uh, so we can do much better than that if we just use a common material like aluminum, which is going to be like a dollar or two a square foot. Um, What's the, was so the material that was transparent? PEI. It's a surface on the but bed are, plate. But isn't this printer going to be able to print that? Yeah. Is, there, is yeah. the raw material cost that's just fine? Oh yeah. There you go. And at that point you get a dollar a pound at the material cost. So yes. But we need to buy the first because we yeah. don't have that yet. Unless we make it on a small printers, which we but could do. Right, so we could print the yeah, the yeah, we are. We are going to, so actually, good point. We are going to be able to save that 1200 bucks because we can print it for, I don't know, like 10 bucks or something. Especially, you can get PEI regrind. Okay, so Google regrind is the technical term for when they chew it back up to recycle. So let's see, PEI regrind, can we get it? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, regrind. They have plenty of it. And how much does it cost? I'm gonna say it's probably gonna cost like, like a uh, dollar a pound, because that's the typical price for regrind of high-performance plastics. So yeah, we're gonna get that cost down from 1,200 to 10 bucks, or so. Because it's only it's very thin. It's like 1 24th of an inch for the stuff we we get typically. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, once we once we get to that level of yeah, we're building, making all these materials. That's going to be very attractive. So yeah, good news. Uh, I think we're we're on track. I think the price point can be very low. So we can look at explicitly. Okay, what's the what's the very explicit one? Like okay, for this four by four chamber, I think we should probably, you know, four by four. That's that's we might even cut it in half, like four by two, because on a four by two, that still means you can print a bunch of these panels side to side stand, standing vertically each panel is about six inches so on a two foot wide bed you can fit almost four of them so we might say maybe do that as our first iteration we got four print heads we print four panels at the same time or something like that so yeah we have to kind of refine this to exactly what we want because uh, as far as we know like nobody makes anything this size it would probably be the largest heated printer in the world perhaps I don't know uh, at least consumer printer that you can buy off the shelf otherwise you're paying like millions for a company to make it especially for you so yeah that's looking good looking good so let's wrap it up at that uh, anyone on a remote still no no nobody remote is there yeah yeah so I think this is uh, time to call it a day I think we got some a bunch of stuff done it's uh I think we move forward how you guys feel about where we got to I feel good. I learned a lot today. yeah I think we learned quite a bit we went definitely for, forward motion like a little deep you know step by step like okay the frame is 240 bucks that's amazing I love it uh, I didn't know that until today did you record that you're making of a frame I did I, I recorded this this session right now yeah, and uh, modeling the free tablet for that. For the I did not mod. If you look at my page, click on a CAD link. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, I looked at it. I have the visual history there. I'm, I'm curious how, like, how you created it that quickly. Yeah, it was like, I was just sitting here watching, <laughs> like, I was doing research, and I looked over, and I was like, oh, it's almost done. Like, cool, yeah. No, that's, uh, that's what we're aiming for. And uh, let's go there for a second. But. You, got, you have to think about how this thing is organized in order to draw it the most easily. And I'm thinking, okay, it's this tall columnar thing. Well, looking straight down, it's where you see all those profiles, the angle profile looking from the top. So I just drew the four corners and extruded them to nine feet because it's going to have to be a little bigger than eight feet because uh, you got to fit the whole bed in there. And I just drew the side, everything in the XY plane. I just extruded on top and it's quick. Like each sketch takes, you know, takes a half a minute if you do it. So... 
in principle you can do this kind of a design it took like half an hour to an hour an hour maybe hour but it's a basic very basic I just did a few details in there I imported I didn't draw that axis I imported yeah. that so you have to work with parts that are already there and I added the angle to the architecture part library so that now you can download the angle just the shape so when you're making an angle like that Is that the 3D Hmm? Is that the 3D print angle? Yeah, I mean, you'd be, you'd be on a ladder looking down Wait. like that, like, it's uh, 108, 9 foot. Yeah, so I started with the four verticals, I added one side, I imported the... So you see that in the visual history, you can study what I did, and you can kind of follow that. So that's why the visual history is pretty useful, and I got all the way to... Uh, that last picture where I just enclosed it with all the sides and put in a slit. The slit is also ended by the angle because on the edges you want to make sure that your edges are tight and attached to something. But that's like, you know, I, I thought about this before. It's like, you know, I, I think about it and dream about it. So, so it's like, I, I had this in my mind already. So I just went, bam, let's just put it into CAD. What's the visual history? Is that, uh, where is that? The four pictures on top of the CAD file. So CAD large, do you see CAD large? When you go to that page, high temperature heat and enclosure, there's CAD large. Off my yeah. CAD link. Yeah, and I just oh, put, okay. pasted okay. the pictures in there because that's useful. It's like you can study it and you can actually study the files because each file that I uploaded to the version of history now, there's about four or five files in there. It corresponds to that point in the file so you can actually go back to it. If you want to modify it, you can. Um, that's why those pictures are important. I think it's a very useful tool to do it. Now, after the six months, if you practice like half an hour each day, like you'll get to this because it's not that complicated. You have to have a clear idea of how it's being built. Uh, but once you have that clear, like, okay, I just decided I'm looking from the top, that's easy. Otherwise, if you like drew it from the face, then you'd have to draw this face, then move it, rotate it. If I look from the top, I just drew this face here, extruded. I drew this face, extruded. So it w that was easier, an easier workflow. So you kind of have to think, what's the easiest way to design it um, when you're you're cutting it up? And you think about what's the geometry here. If it's Z geometry, yeah, this thing is going straight up. Work on the XY plane. That's the easiest way you can get this uh, three-dimensional thing in a Z direction because it's largely symmetrical and like around the Z axis. Yeah. So that's I guess that's how it's like done. Importing and integrating the you know, yeah. Like so I knew so I knew that we had the D3D CNC torch table, so I went to that page and I said I downloaded that file and I just took one axis out of there. And that's just a, like a placeholder axis because that's not exactly how the the bed support is gonna be probably like one uh, one bar, one stiff bar that's right down the middle so that it it opens up you have the smallest slit, probably like a half an inch by four inch piece of metal half inch by four inch or maybe three eighths by four inch so it doesn't torque this way so yeah probably like half inch half inch by four i can tell you that is very stiff span it all the way across and you just opened up the slit in the sides of the chamber only half half an inch that's all we need so don't don't sit the axis don't make like the one inch axes you know that's twice as much heat loss potentially so you have to close it up tighter so you do it the minimum thickness that you can still seal up and have a have no temp no temperature loss no heat loss out of that yeah so the the workflow that I used was simply merge when I did that I did you don't import it you merge there's a merge file in the file menu within FreeCAD um, so you go FreeCAD file merge it's not import it's merge and that's the merge workflow so make a note of that on the wiki page there's a there's a page called merge workflow study that that's that's all that we do here that's all we need to do and that's how I did this thing and it's quick quick and efficient merge workflow I'm actually gonna put a link to that because that's a very important page um, merge workflow and there's a video on a merge workflow uh, there too so let me put that I'm going to put that right next to the title there, Merge Workflow on slide number six.
And that's a way where if people are working on individual files, like if we divided that printer into many, many files, like someone else do the access. Within that hour, we could have done the whole thing. That's, that's how good it gets. You can do a complex design. If you have part libraries that you've already worked on, it's really good. That's very powerful. So um, then we can talk about iterating on a design like that. In an hour, we have the CAD. We start 3D printing parts, put parts on a torch table, and bam, it's going to be magic. And that's, that's where we want to get to eventually. Um, in these la next six months, if we're going to build a few torch tables so we can get that workflow. We're going to build the printers so that with the printers and torch tables, we'll do a lot, a lot with that pretty quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, let's wrap it up at that. That is, that is pretty good news. Uh, these workflows can be very effective. Um, and simply merging multiple files that go into a part library. The part library holds all these files. You, as soon as you do it, uh, you upload it to the part library. You do the screenshots so that we have a visual history of how the thing was built, even with multiple people. And uh, if you're working on one part library, the only thing is the wiki is not real-time editable. It's semi-real-time editable. It's, Maybe it's live. In, in the extension. What's that? Maybe there could be, maybe there's an extension for like adding docs functionality. Sort of thing. Well, you can edit it, but if two people are edit at the exact same time, you get conflict yeah. and, and you have to, like one person has to like copy and paste their work maybe into a different page and to save it because otherwise you're going to lose it. Or wait for that person, the first person that, no, if you get a conflict, you basically have to remember what you changed and then go back to that page which is not convenient that's not good but if we're doing this kind of work one thing we can do about that is um, set up different wiki pages or as simple as uh, let's see for s different sections oh yeah I think you can address that the wiki can have main main headings which are between the equal signs I think if you're editing different sections it, it only takes that particular section, yeah not there you go page, yeah. so as long as we divide the wiki page into different sections with the equal sign that's the main heading then multiple people editing that in real time won't conflict only when you're editing the same section um, we don't run into that a lot you run into it sometimes it's not not a bad issue but that's why we embed the google docs because that way we can completely real time do it that's so you combine the google docs embedding them into the wiki yeah sounds good um so what next on on monday so we'll go back we, we do want to review and study what we did on on friday so we can go over the video let's go to the videotape and study it because we can we can learn a lot from it too i've got the video look at my channel i, I put up all my time lapses and uh other people do put them in your log like I would scour logs to see if people got any videos or the day page the the 120 design sessions day three or you know corresponding days put put all your links to we should set up that template better so it's easier for people you just click in there and just click and upload uh, so we should make that more easy template it a little more uh, we started a template so that's good it's a good start every day we're gonna make it better so that's cool mm-hmm Let's finish at that. It was a good day. I think we got some bits accomplished, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll do Saturdays. We'll do this kind of full time and off in the week weeks. You know, if you have any time, yeah, continue working on us. It's, it's literally we're going to make it as good as, as we make it by how much effort we put into it. Uh, and my, my priority would be to get, get more money. I want to contact some people, see if they can throw some more money at it for that we like some of the first things are like getting a website maybe like Paul Paul was talking about that but like a website or some basic prints like what you're doing with the you know, just actually posting okay even if it's the first draft of it but let's start making it look like okay we've got something that's actually oh, coming awesome. up because uh, we were eventually posted on a, on a hero X page but we can have a, a website that does that 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 shows more info maybe supporting um, like teaching documentation like rapid learning materials yeah that would be useful in, a, in another page yeah mm -hmm. yeah so we're wrapping up Paul um, yeah we just mentioned that the website as you were walking in 
because you mentioned a website, we should try to get one up. And I would ask you, like, man, let's just throw one up and start uh, iterating on it. You know, um, how can we do that? What's the most effective way? Yeah, well, I can make a landing page if that would help. I know yeah. UX posts your product description, but if it would help to yeah. gather people, um, I usually make a static site. Uh, I use this library called Tailwinds uh, with React. Is that the and drag and drop newer one? Is it's, that Wix you're saying? Uh, no, you can use Wix, um, but since I'm a programmer, it's easier to use just like. It's, it's a front end sure. frame. Yeah, yeah, man. You just you start want to go doing to, it. Like DetroitArchology.org. That's like an example of something we did pretty quickly for our own project, and uh, I'm happy to just like copy and paste it, change some colors, and or change some art. And what is the website? DetroitArchology. DetroitArchology.org. Mm-hmm. So that's a yeah. Yeah, it's a static site. You can host that, you know, on GitHub Pages or Amazon mm -hmm. or any number of free hosting sites. You, you, you're uh, you're the designer too. I'm well, not the designer. I can't take credit for that. that okay, that, that, <laughs> I was that, like, that, I was like, well, just that's a pre-made theme, and I can I can look up a number of different themes and different choices, and use any one of those. That's like a Tailwinds theme. Tailwinds is a uh, node, an NPM package. Of, you know. mm -hmm. So people tell me what to put on it. I'm happy to put on it, or I can just do the standard things like teammates. You know, um, well, so that's Prince. Prince, give him a skeleton, like, because Prince looked into that heavily. Like, what's what's a challenge include? Okay. Yeah. Um, send a skeleton on and just start filling that info. Yeah. You know, just make it attractive. I think the focus, the va real value we can produce is training, teaching people. The thing that people get out of this is rapid learning on how to start building their world, really. Sure. Uh, and to th to that, like, good learning materials, like all the including how to do FreeCAD, like really effectively. So maybe another video, like a really good video. I have the, my two super tight five minute videos there, uh, but maybe we do like a more, more dedicated to this, this effort. Super uh, tight, like FreeCAD videos or? Super tight, look at FreeCAD 101 on the wiki and you see two of my videos where there's not a second of breathing space. It's oh, wow. super uh, condensed I like because I was pissed like how many hours I would have to go through so many videos <laughs> To learn little detail, a person would put up like a 15-minute video that I could that I would show in my video in about five seconds. Sure. And I was like, man, think about how many hours are wasted when people are going through all those videos. So I said, let's make me a video that that tries to do that super condensed. Um, but you have to review that video many times to get it because it's fast, super fast-paced. But that kind of style, the, the no dead time kind of high quality, yeah. where one minute takes you an hour of edit, you know, like yeah. per minute. Like one or two hours to j of edit to to get like a one minute or s something to that effect or or even worse than that. It it just took a long time. It took like a I think it took like a day or two. Yeah, I mean a day or two to make five minutes condense the instruction into five minutes, which is I mean yeah. that's normal. It but takes time to cut out. Yeah. It's not essential, so. Yeah. Yeah, that can be on the front page. Um, yeah. Like Training material. YouTube, they can just like click play right on the library site. A quick two two minute intro on this. I'm open to all y'all pumping into it. Like people see my face, but if you, you guys want to do it, we maybe we just do like one sentence each. Or something. I don't know. Do something something, uh, something, something creative, creative that shows, hey, we're a posse here. We're <laughs> we're, uh, we're working on it together. And we'll kind of in fact set the, the collaborative atmosphere. Yeah, yeah in, in fact, fact that I shouldn't I shouldn't be talking to myself if, if it's a collaborative project. Yeah. So yeah. So I would say yeah, just try to do it, put it up whenever you can. The uh, the logo is still in design, right? Yeah, we don't have a logo. Uh, we can I'll check in with you know we can email. Uh, was that Sam? See what where he's at on that. I'm not sure he did anything on that today. There's another guy. I don't know how you say his name, but T A U A T. Um, T A U A T log. Tway, I think he says a Tway or something. He's from Brazil, but he's a good good graphics guy. He does Blender and uh, Inkscape and GIMP and stuff like that. I was gonna see if, like, if I can draw something really quick, maybe. Uh, yeah. Submit, like, yeah. if we all just submit it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, like, does which one fits best? And yeah, iterative. Just keep going. Just blast it and, and see what sticks. Mhm. Mm yeah. Pretty cool. All right. So I'll stop recording right here.